Hi, everyone. I'm Egidio Nascimento, and I'm here with uh, Peter Adrians. And we're going to put together a bit of a, a webcast, which I think you'll find quite interesting. Um, this actually came about as a result of walking through Peter's studio and gallery. And when he started to explain to me some of his thinkings and inspiration behind some of the paintings, I just it just gave so much more meaning, so much more life to the uh, to the art, to the paintings that I thought I suggested to Peter that perhaps we should capture some of these uh, reflections in uh, in a couple of webcasts. So we've got a couple of uh, a series of uh, videos to put together for you. This is going to be the first one on um, on set phones. It's an area in in Saint George and Fractals. Peter, Peter will get into that. Before we jump into that, though, I thought we'd take just a minute or so at the start to get for those of you that don't know of Peter. Uh, Peter Adrians is a, a man of many hats, a philosopher, a painter, entrepreneur, and when he finds some spare time, he's also a, a musician and a restaurateur as well. So he, he has many hats. Uh, he and his wife, uh, Rennie, are originally Dutch. They're from Holland, and they came. their destiny brought them to the Azores about 20 years ago. They uh, fell in love with um, the island, in particular saint George. and uh, we've got a couple of pictures up here just to put it into context so you understand why they... They liked the island so much. And while they were there, they came across um, an abandoned cheese factory in Sant Antonio, one of the uh, villages on St. George Island. And they thought it might make a, an interesting uh, studio for Peter. And so uh, they uh, renovated it completely. And uh, Peter set up a workshop there. Uh, so on the ground floor, that's where he has the, the workshop and uh, lessons in uh, painting uh, and does his work as well. And then on the second floor, he has a, a gallery where he displays some of his work as well. Uh, another area that Peter uses to display his work is the, the air, our restaurant he and his brother and Rennie manage and own in a, a lovely village called Ursuline on the south side of the island. There's a picture here as well. And actually, one of the paintings, which is a great segue uh, to this initiation of uh, the series, is a painting that actually is in the restaurant. And it's a beautiful painting, one that I've uh, certainly uh, fell in love with as well. And um, it's the, the basis for this series. So Peter, with that overview, welcome. Thank you for doing this. I think uh, it's a great opportunity to uh, to share some of your thoughts and your paintings with everyone. Yeah, well, uh, uh, thanks. Uh, thanks for, I want to thank you really for the opportunity to uh, to dive into my work and uh, under your guidance, you have the uh, the 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 view of my work of somebody that comes from outside and sometimes there are spe things special or take things for granted in my work that not everybody sees directly so i think this is a great idea to have these uh, these little sessions thanks for that you're welcome very welcome so actually look okay. we're going to dive right in and so set Funch, this is one of the paintings that we're referring to and um, Peter can probably give you the dimensions, but it's quite a, a large, a large painting. And uh, I, I kind of uh, resonated with this painting just because when I looked at it, and I know the actual site to me, it looked like a picture. I couldn't believe it was a, it was a painting. And we're going to enlarge some of it and go through some of the detail. But uh, Peter, perhaps you can just uh, provide a bit of an overview of when and and where was this painting done? Um, well, okay, so. Basically, it's at Fontes, which means something like seven so fountains or something like that of seven sources. Or, and um, it's it's a pl place uh, um, on the west side of the island. Uh, it's it's um, it, yeah, it's it's an art semi artificial place, and lots of very special plants from the island have been collected there. I think it was a rich widow that donated this to the society. I'm not. I'm not completely sure, but it's a place where I love to walk around. You have water. You have these kind of uh, springs there, and uh, and the uh, all year long the, the vegetation is lush and and you feel mm -hmm. like a kind of closed in to a forest. And of course, being a painter, I thought, oh, this is really a challenge to 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 trying to make a painting that reflects the atmosphere of the place and um, so one of the challenges was to um, to to create depth in this image because actually i've been painting also in panama in the in the jungle and it's quite interesting you don't have perspective you don't have straight lines from a 
from a road or a house to orientate yourself on. So one of the challenges was to to give it depth and to really have this submersive experience of the uh, of the forest. So and um, yeah, that that that's what was my initial ambition. Yeah, here's a picture mm. of the place. Almost the same. It's the same spring. Uh, I think that's the little house in the middle where the uh, where the ducks um, live and stuff like that. That's right. Uh, and you see this. That's right. Uh, you, yeah, <laughs> you see this this diffuse light. You see uh, actually also light at uh, at the back. So basically, you have you see through the trees, and of course, um, giving a, a a good realistic rendering. It's First of all, it's completely impossible to make a detailed painting with all the details that you know are there. Um, right. It's, it's simply too much work. So the, the, the challenge is, how do I create a mode of painting, a mode of representing things with my brush that gives this impression? Yeah, and, and certainly this picture, we're not putting it up to compare it to the other one because it's a completely different location, but one that can give the, the people uh, watching this kind of a sense of what the actual park is like. And I, I think actually when I took this picture, it was an overcast day, it wasn't sun, and certainly something you can't capture in the, in the pictures. You often have birds singing as well in the background. So just to put a complete picture into that uh, that whole park. And perhaps, well, Peter, uh, as we go forward, maybe before we're getting into it, you could speak to yeah. some of the techniques that you used. Okay, so um, uh, basically the, the the magic word here is fractals. And fractals is a, a modern mathematical technique. Um, and uh, we're not diving into the mathematics, but um, I'll show you this picture here. Which uh, on the on the on the let's say surface looks like a rock in view, rocky view of the sea, uh, but if you uh, and and you know the rock is really like this a regular shape of this lava that you have here, but if you look at the the bigger picture, you can yeah actually I'm holding the rock in my hand and uh, it's it's only a very small piece of lava. Now the reason why I show this is that this is actually we. It, it's already mentioned in a note of a famous note by Da Vinci, who says, "If you want to paint a mountain, paint a rock." And the um, the insight he has is that the regular shapes that you find in large mountains actually repeat themselves in the smaller parts of the mountains, almost at every scale. And this repeating of the same kind of patterns. At different scales is what in what is studied by the theory of fractals, uh, and I'm not diving into the details here. So the ambition is that if you, for instance, uh, want to um, uh, paint plants or or trees or, or structures that that have this kind of phenomenon of of irregularity and the same kind of irregularity at all scales, is that you never can paint all the details, but you have to find a way with your brush to, I would say, trick the eye into perceiving this richness. And the trick is, and uh, I think I'm one of the first to actually notice this, I've never read about it, for me it's important, is to, um, to understand the grammar of a tree or a, a plant or um, any other growing being. So here you see on the left side, you see, some actually mathematic this is there's a mathematics about this kind of uh, 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 trees they called Lindenmeyer trees after a guy who was called Lindenmeyer was the first to think about this and you see uh, at the top you see a, a line on the left you see a line and then it bifurcates into two lines that actually uh, at uh, that in themselves have a 90 degree angle between them and if you repeat this at a, at a um, at at any scale, you could go in infinitely. Then you get this kind of uh, plant-like structures. And if you change the grammar a bit in the second one, it's it's asymmetrical. You get actually a nice a nice well, this this is a, a nice yeah. It's it's a kind of flower. It gets more and more realistic uh, if you if you put more information in these grammars. Now, if you understand these grammars, 
then you actually have to find ways with your brush to suggest them. Say, uh, and I, I that the word doesn't exist uh, uh, exist in in English. There's a famous Dutch word by Dutch painters. It's called bladslag, and it's actually uh, blad is a leaf and a, 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 a slag is a stroke. So it means that the painter mm. has a good handwriting with suggesting leaves and. The, actually, the painters in the 19th century were brilliant at that, Dutch painters, and also a lot of English painters, by the way. Uh, so um, they, the, 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 the trick is to find grammars or movements of your brush, uh, choreographies for your brush, so to speak, that, uh, that you can actually easily, easily apply uh, and train yourself and, and use those to uh, create this rich texture of plants and grass and water and what have you. Um, so th that's, that's the, the fractal part of it. Um, when I teach my classes, and uh, I give lots of examples, I also tell a bit of the mathematical background. But the interesting thing is, if you and also that's in my book on, on painting for the brain, if you look at works by famous painters, uh, then you see that intuitively they understood these things. I analyze in the book, I analyze uh, uh, an etching by Rembrandt, and I mm -hmm. analyze the, the famous uh, uh, um, tsunami wave from Hokusai. Um, but it's, so it's not something I just, I, I can explain it better why it works, but if you look back, the really clever painters already knew this. So that's basically mm -hmm. the story behind this. Uh, so if I'm, I'm, this was also applying this kind of stuff. Later on, I'll show you a painting that I did before this. You can see where it comes from. So I went to, to set the font first to study in C2, the plans there. So now, basically, what you see, for instance, here is the, um, uh, the, the, the tree. And you see actually that the leaves bifurcate in lots of leaves. But the or, or the branches bifurcate, but the leaves bifurcate in the same kind of way. And if you had to look at the details of the leaves, you see bifurcation again. So it's actually a repeating pattern of all kinds, of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, scales. And um, then, of course, your skill as a painter comes up. You have to. Um, to uh, to to have the 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 reflection of the light on the, so basically on the on the parts where the leaves are turned to the sky they are more um, they have, they have almost white reflection so but you also see that mm. I'm kind of meticulously with my brush cre recreating all these all these details here so that's and mm -hmm. if you look at some other details in the back you you see you see this happening so um, and and actually, I was quite it took me long, almost a month to finish the painting. Not that I was working every day on it, but I had to think about what to do in the in the meantime and, and how to solve some problems. Then in, in, while while I was painting, I was thought, wow, this is really going going somewhere. It's, it's quite stunning what was mm -hmm. coming out. So okay, yeah, quite amazing. So yeah, that's uh, the story. You... When you see this yeah. painting in person, it just it's hard to believe that the amount of detail and attention. It's probably even hard to show here in the webcast, even though you know this is the big the bigger view, the large full view, and we try and zoom in a bit, it still doesn't give the the full when you look at the painting up close in detail, you really get a really a interesting view of it. Anyway. Okay, so I uh, oh yeah. So basically one of one of the things I did is uh, and I like to do. I love to go out and and paint. Uh, it's actually not often too good weather because if it's too hot, your paint dries on your brush, and if it's uh, rainy and and foggy, then it's also not good because it's kind of is dripping of your uh, canvas. But here I am uh, making a a, a, a a sketch, a study for this set font of painting, and um, so uh, what's nice is that. Well, people are not very used to to plein air painters in in Saint Georges or in the Azores. So there was a, a, a trainer with some a football young football players was coming along, and they were really fascinated by what it was doing. And I uh, I, I love to 
explain a bit what was going on. It was nice. So uh, if you if you skip the next, if you yeah here you see. So this is a sketch where I actually painted roughly the same spot from a different angle, and you see that um, I, I'm really not getting into the grammar stuff uh, too much. I'm only focusing on the rhythm of the leaves in the trees and stuff like that. But uh, nevertheless, it's already a painting that I like a lot, and it gives it it, re it, it reflects the atmosphere of the of the place very well. So basically, I, I always say I'm not painting what is there, but that I'm there. That so it's the feeling mm. it's the, that the place has with it. So um, this is how I go about it. Now, there's another painting that I made a couple of years before. <laughs> coming up right now yeah so here you see actually a painting that is much more elaborate by the way both paintings have roughly the same size this is somewhat bigger this is 160 by one meter a set of font this is 150 by one meter and um here is a uh, here i really spent weeks and weeks of wiggling with my brush uh, and um the story is quite interesting behind this painting um, it's also, if you stand in front of it, it's stunning because you just suck, the eyes get so much information, you just sucked into the, in the landscape. Uh, I like the painting a lot. Uh, and actually I did this a uh, couple of years before I did uh, set Fontes. And, um, yeah, th this, th this was the first time I really went to this kind of details in my painting with, uh, with, uh, fractal, with the, the knowledge of what fractals meant for painting, but uh, we're going to probably talk about this painting in another um, in another episode, another uh, video. So um, you 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 I'll 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 give you the stories about this painting later. For the moment, this yeah. was what I had to say about I had to say about the set of fonts. Set of fonts. I think that was great. This wasn't meant to be a, a super long video, but just provides additional insight and. Yeah. I thank you and, and the people who watch this and at future points in time uh, appreciate it. I hope they appreciate it and thank you as well. For those of you that are interested in seeing more of Peter's work, he does have his um, gallery online. So it's Peter Adrian's uh, with a hyphen there dot com and then gallery. And he has over 1300 uh, uh, paintings and artworks and sketches all online. So you can uh, go through those if you're interested. So once again, thank you very much, Peter. I think that was great. Uh, this is exactly what yeah, we were looking you. to capture. Yeah. So, and stay thank tuned for more, uh, more episodes.